beautiful people. Welcome back to another episode of Who Can Relate. I hope all is very well. And I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you that comment on YouTube, that write reviews on Apple Podcasts, that DM me on Instagram, all of the above, all the ways we can connect and build this community to be even stronger and even bigger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also wanted to check in with the ones who need a check in. And I want to just ask, how are you doing? Are you doing too much? Are you doing not enough? How are you doing? Okay, today's episode is definitely a top three for me in the catalog so far. It was a lot. It was a lot. A lot of emotions, a lot of tears, a lot of smiles, a lot of joy, and a lot of learning experiences and memories that we built. I've had Adriana and, and Shay on before, and God bless you all. I, I over-talked that episode, and I apologize. I, I appreciate you for sticking through that entire hour plus of just your boy rambling. I, I just cringe every time I watch that episode. I just was trying to overcompensate for the nervousness that was between the girls, and I, I tried to you know protect them. And Anyways, it was just wrong, and I've learned my lesson, and I shut the hell up on this episode. I sat back and I was basically like a, a part of the audience. So anyways, this is a lot of Shay and Adriana and they did an amazing job. Good job, girls. Proud of you all. Proud of you all. Proud of both of you. <laughs> and I, maybe I'm thinking, so here it is really quick. If you all also consume, enjoy the podcast, there's an episode coming out that we did with an astrologer. And this is the fifth astrologer that has asked me when I asked them about family in the future they start off by asking me the same question, which is, do twins run in your family? Every single one of them, like five for five. They don't run in my family, but they do run in Shay's family. So we'll see. So anyways, I'm proud of you all, future kids included. And <clears throat> just super excited for everyone to be able to consume this beautiful exchange of a lot of emotions again. A lot of beautiful messages and uh, just a, a overall great experience for the three of us. So <clears throat> again, I'm not going to over talk. I'm not going to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for each and every one of you who continue to support the show, who show love, who share. That's the, the biggest thing that you can do to support the show. Side note is to share it with someone that you think can relate to it or someone you think who could benefit from it. So thank you. Okay. Enough talking. I appreciate you all. Enjoy the episode. You want to start light or you want to start deep? <laughs> Probably light. Light? Okay. Question number one. This is a question for both of you. So whoever wants to answer first, it's the same question. <laughs> what were your first impressions of each other? <laughs> we need like a little game, like button. <laughs> what what um, show is that called? Family Feud? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's another game show. I forgot what it's called. Okay, you go first. Okay. I would say my first impression of Adriana was you were so sweet. <laughs> Not so, if I met you now, I might have a different first impression. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, my first impression was like, she's so cute and so sweet and so like happy and light. And she called me her best friend the first time. <laughs> my impression was like, I don't, I'm not going to say like, oh, another one, because that sounds like rude. Like, just another person that's around. And what, what gave you that thought? Um, because when I was younger, um, it would just be like, um, I guess you could say like a new girl. Mm -hmm. Not every single time, but just like sometimes. And then like, oh, like. So Shay was the fourth girl that you met, mm -hmm. right? And the first girl was a long relationship. The mm -hmm. second girl you only saw five times because mm -hmm. it was so quick. And the third time was another relationship. And then Shay. Mm -hmm. So 
for you, it was just a thought like, you know, is this just someone that's going to be five times or someone I could get attached to or close with? Mm -hmm. I think I can understand you feeling that way because I think the last relationship before you were introduced to me was still a little fresh. Yeah. Do you feel that way? Yeah. (laughs) So I understand. I get it. But if we were to really, um, aside from that, that, that feeling of trigger in you about like, is this just going to be another girl that my dad's going to bring in? I'm going to get attached to, and then I'm going to have to be saying my goodbyes to aside from that feeling, like what was your first impression of me as a person? I thought you were really nice. (laughs) I was like, oh, she's really, really nice. She's really pretty. She's really nice. (laughs) I think, didn't I? Well, the first time I met you was kind of briefly in like that parking lot when I, when you were in LA with Gianna. Yeah. And I was like, "Mm, my dad said she's just a friend rather like they say she's just a friend <laughs> but we know she's just <laughs> not a friend <laughs> so you knew in that you knew prior to that moment mm. you were like i'm possibly going to be meeting somebody that my dad is probably seeing yeah how did that make you feel fine yeah, yeah. were you still trying to process like the breakup from your dad and the ex at that time no 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 i guess Not like, not to say I'm like used to saying like, oh, it's like just goodbye, Mm -hmm. but it's just like, it's not hard. Yeah. You've gotten used to knowing how to say goodbye. Yeah. How did it make you feel? Do you feel like your dad did a good job with like waiting to introduce me? Because it was about, I would say your dad and I had already been, do you understand now? I feel like there was a lot of moments where you kind of knew he was seeing somebody and you were probably wondering, why hasn't he introduced me? Do mm-hmm. you understand why he did that? Yeah, I think I understand. Because it's like you don't want... I Like, usually he would just introduce a girl. And I would be like, oh, hi. Or not... I wouldn't be like, oh, <laughs> hi there. I'm just giving an example. And I would just be like... I don't know. And then I would get too... I feel like I would get too attached. Mm-hmm. I get attached really easily, so I, I think I get attached too easily, and then when it's time to say goodbye, I just feel like kind of messed up. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel that the timing was better this time as far as, like, because your dad and I were probably dating for a little more than six months at that time before mm-hmm. your dad decided to introduce me. And, in fact, I don't even think the timing of when I actually met you was according to our plan. Like, we had no intention of, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He had no, and in- you had no intention to introduce me to her at that time, and it was more you that kind of really put that request request out. Do you remember Before that for the party? Yeah, you sent um, that yeah. text message to your dad. Yeah, that really pulled a lot of heartstrings. Yeah, because I kind of already knew, <laughs> and I was like, "Might as well just get it over with." I'm just kidding. I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't think like that. I was just saying like, "Well, I know I'm gonna be introduced. Might as well just do it my time." <laughs> take control yeah and also i had natalie natalie like my friend there so mm-hmm. i was like i could always express my feelings mm-hmm. if i didn't because i wouldn't want to express my feelings to you about shay if shay's there mm-hmm. so i'd feel more comfortable talking to a friend about it mm-hmm. and if you're not there then i would say something yeah do you remember writing that text message yeah did natalie help you no you just wrote it yeah i wrote it while i was in the car you're so sweet. Were you on your way to school? Because I think it was in the morning. Um, no. No. It No. I wasn't. I actually stayed home because I was actually sick. <laughs> I was just in the car going to get food. Uh, just I'll add to that. Um, I didn't know when I wanted to introduce you to Shay, but it wasn't going to be in November when, when it all went down. So... Um, but I did feel a sense of, maybe you didn't realize this in the moment, but I did feel a sense of you wanting to take control of this situation because you haven't been in control of other situations when you met girls. And as I've talked to you about this before, uh, one of the regrets I have in introducing you to any woman is not allowing you to say goodbye to them. So that's something I wish I would have done because 
there was a time where I was really hoping and essentially asking you to accept this person that I wanted to be with. And you did every time, but I didn't allow you to get closure. Right? I didn't allow you to, again, maybe say some last goodbyes or whatever last messages, you know, to just have that sense of um, closure and just like completion kind of. So I, I wonder for you if it was at all a want to, um, for it to kind of be on your terms this time. Um, I wanted more, I guess I wanted more control over it because I never had control over it. So I was like, my, this yeah. is my chance. Yeah. New girl, my chance. Yeah. I will say, thankfully, it didn't work out with any of the other three because now we have Shay. So. I also have to say, as much as your dad wanted to protect you from meeting me, I also, it was really important, like the timing for me to meet you was was big because I wanted it to be right, not just for myself, because I also get very attached to people, but I wanted it to be right for you. I didn't want to be another person that just comes in and out of your life, you know? So. Yeah. Okay. Next question. First question is for Shay. Were you scared that I may end things if you didn't get along with Adriana? Actually, that thought never crossed my mind. I had no doubt that I would not get along with you. She was confident. Uh, okay, next question for Adriana. Did you ever feel like Shay was taking your dad away from you? No. Actually, n yes and no. Okay. So, like, the whole house situation, when you told me about that, that did actually kind of cross my mind when he had to move here. Mm. That actually did kind of cross my mind. Then I was like, I remember this one time, the landlord came to the house and was like, um, next year you might have to move out because there might be potential buyers um, or you can buy the house. And you said, okay, next April. And April was when you made the decision and May is when you moved. Mm -hmm. That's how I remember it. Mm. That's why I kind of knew that you might have were going to move, but I didn't know you were going to move to California. And so knowing and for well, finding out that I was moving to California, did it ever cross your mind like Shay's taking my dad away or California's taking my dad away, anything like that? It did cross my mind, but I didn't think like that because I was like, I'm still going to see my dad. Mm -hmm. It's not like Shay's going to take him away forever and I'm never going to see him again. Mm -hmm. That, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll go back to Shay. What are the difficulties you've had in your role as a step parent? Which is this a good question because yeah, we always talk really about like the highlights. So again, what would you say are, have been some of the difficulties? And I guess I'll add to that. Were they practical or were they just like in your head overthinking maybe fears of hypotheticals? I don't know if I would call this difficulties, but I've been probably more conscious over just trying to give you the experience of being a step child mm -hmm. that what do you mean by experience because I've had experience yeah but what so, do you mean by that okay I wouldn't call them difficulties I I definitely feel like I've been trying to be more conscious at making you feel as equally a part of our dynamic together and family and family and and part of that comes from me not feeling that when I was a stepchild mm -hmm. so I want to give you that completely opposite experience that I had. And I think that's really, really like important to me and in, in at the forefront of my brain at all times. So would you say that that's, that's a hypothetical fear, right? Um, it hasn't technically happened yet. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like every child is different. There's no right way to really connect yeah. or raise a child. So mm -hmm. I feel that that fear is like, what if I can't give the connection that I, I deal with? ideally have in my head as like what I want with her what if I mm -hmm. what if we don't have that what if I don't I can't give that you know mm -hmm. and what if I do something wrong <laughs> you know it's yeah. just like all those hypotheticals that sure okay uh next question is for Adriana when was the moment you felt that you allowed space for Shay in your life like I welcomed her to my life yeah in your heart and your mind especially if you've had um your reservations or hesitations before because as you're saying like you know my dad's introducing me to another girl you know you have some 
guards up? You know, is this something I can mm. build with, with, with this person? So do you remember that if there was ever a time where you felt like, okay, I feel really good about this. I really like Shay. Like you've kind of welcomed her into your, your heart. Mm. Um, I think, yes. I don't remember, remember like any me, like. Yeah. Specific moment. Yeah. But I think maybe I was like more, more thinking if this person's going to stay. Mm hmm. I think, I don't think that was more of a reservation. I wasn't like putting my guard up. Mm -hmm. I think it was just more like, is this person going to stay? Yeah. Are they, is my dad going to get married to this person? Mm -hmm. Just like stuff like that. Okay. So would you, could you think of a moment when you were like, okay, Shay is here to stay? Um, when you proposed to her actually. Okay. <laughs> when you said that you, when you showed me the ring, you said you're going to propose to her. That's when I actually realized mm -hmm. she's here to stay. Okay. Yeah. So how did you feel knowing that, okay, my dad is serious. This is going to be his wife. How'd that make you feel? I was like, okay, we found one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're relieved. Yeah. Mm. I wasn't relieved like, oh, like this is making me really happy that my dad doesn't have to go through another person. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it just made me feel better not to meet another person and have to go through it again. Yeah. Like your search is also yeah. done. Yeah. I think, for me, the moment that I felt the bond and connection, I guess, was solidified. Um, there were a lot of times, a lot of moments where I was like, oh, like that felt really good. Or this is what I've always wanted. This is what I wanted to see. This is how I've wanted to feel um, with a woman coming into your life and our life. But for me, it's, it's uh, kind of obvious. But the moment Shay gave you a ring at our wedding, at our ceremony, uh, was which no one knew besides the wedding planner. Did and you know? You, I uh, no one knew. I didn't know. I think right, honey. No one knew besides you and the wedding planner. My mom knew um, the wedding planner, and I think a couple of my girlfriends. Okay. Yeah. So, but I definitely didn't know, Adriana. You definitely didn't know. I know when you called my name on my hand, I was like, "Must <laughs> been too. a mistake." I was like, <laughs> yeah. it's "Not about me." Me too. And you know, knowing the significance, and I'll let you, honey, go into it. But again, I'll just give you, you know, my feeling in that moment was just like, not that I had any doubts, not that I had any reservations or you hesitations. Were just shocked. No, it, it just ultimately validated and solidified that I was with the right one. And I found also the right one for a role, you know, as a step parent, as a step parent, this, this happened moments before saying I do. <laughs> yeah, so let the people know, honey. <laughs> well, I think I think my my question to that, which would I feel like a lot of the audience would probably ask, like you didn't have moments before that moment because that's already a big moment. So for you to feel the validation well, yeah, in mean, that moment. It's it's hard to, you know, as Adriana said earlier, it's hard to put my finger on it. I had mm -hmm. plenty. Because um, I would think that you would have to, knowing... Mm -hmm. how you are you would have to have that moment happen yeah it was just it was more even. of a feeling of of whenever it happened you know yeah. i can't remember it's not like but you that's opened the door for her yeah. and that was the mo you know this it's yeah i can't give you an answer for that but mm -hmm. again i will tell you that there were plenty of moments and opportunities where i was looking you know not mm -hmm. to like uh catch you or like point something out but i was just looking for a connection and a genuine connection, not a fake connection, not like I know the key to JD's heart is to be good with his daughter. Like, you know, and you were, you always, I've said this actually before, you've always showed up in a genuine, authentic, caring, loving way. Mm -hmm. um, almost in a way that I felt like, regardless of you and I, like I love her. Mm -hmm. So it was a separate love in the best way possible. Yeah, And that to me was, was great because again, I knew it wasn't just for me. It wasn't just to be with me and to get in, you know, good with me from the moment you met her, that interaction and in the, in the click. Uh, but again, it, to me, it was a long-term click. There's been clicks before with her, with other mm -hmm. women, but it felt forced and, or, um, just premature. It felt like you can't really have this type of, I think kind of going back to one of your other questions that you asked me, my fears coming into being like a step parent or meeting somebody with that has a child. I think that when I was meeting you, you're about to turn 10 and a part of me felt kind of envious to all the other girls that had met you at such a younger age. Cause I'm like, that's easy to connect with like a, a, 
a child, like a toddler, a, you know, a six year old, a seven year old, it gets harder as you get older. Like, like even right now who you are today, if, if, um, your dad was bringing a new girl into life, that's hard for that person because you are now your own, like you are little, who you are independent person with your own mature thoughts. Um, so I think I did f- have some sort of a fear because you were 10 and I didn't know, like, I didn't really know you as a person, but from what your dad like said, I think that, um, I, I wasn't too worried, but of course it's always like in the back of your mind. I'm like, she's about to be 10. What if she doesn't like me? <laughs> but, um, at the same time I did feel confident. <laughs> it's good to think that because I, I guess with other girls that you've been with um I guess I actually always thought that I was like I don't know if they'll like this person like they might be nice right now just to impress my dad but I don't know if I'll like them later on and what about Shay so I actually kind of felt the same way because mm-hmm. I felt like well are you trying to impress my dad or are you just genuinely having a good connection with me mm-hmm. which I don't think some of the girls that you were with did that mm-hmm. um I think there was like one or two but that did that like they were trying to let you know like i'm basically here to stay Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but i actually felt like you actually i guess you could say cared which it's i felt like that too before but it wasn't like you like they really really did they were just like i'm just in a relationship i never really thought i was gonna have a stepdaughter in my Mm. relationship interesting that's good that's really good. And and it's normal for you, by the way, Mama, to f- have felt that way. Like, mm, let me just figure out this girl, Shay. You know, mm-hmm. is she here to stay? Is she in for the right reasons, the right intentions? So it's, it's normal and natural for you to feel that way. I think that, again, is such a testament to Shay as to the kind of person she is. Because you and I both were saying the same things, which is ultimately we felt the genuineness. We felt the, you know, real love like you know this is who I am kind of almost like I know exactly what I have to offer you know I know how I want to offer it I've never done this before but I'm obviously willing to try and kind of take it or leave it you know which I actually appreciated I appreciated like this is who she was and it is what it is which was great because obviously you know it ended up being the perfect match for us Mm -hmm. but another thing I was thinking you know back to Shay's point of meeting you at 10 it was more difficult than meeting you maybe at two or four or eight because not only are you kind of the person that you are and you've kind of had your habits, but you've also had this experience in the past. Mm-hmm. And so you have your reservations, whether they're subconsciously or consciously, you have these fears of, is this person going to leave as well? Is this not is this person going to not work out with my dad and vice versa? So for Shay walking into something like that, in a way, I can't think of another word, but it was kind of unfair. You know, she was not at a fair advantage that the other women have would have been in. Mm -hmm. I also was going to say, I think too, I was sensitive to the fact that you might still have been healing from the last girl. No, which I, it sounds kind of mean for me to just be like, no, but like I said, I feel used to it. I feel the feeling even I've, I don't really say goodbye or I just haven't said goodbye to anybody, but I guess I still know the feeling like of them just going and there's they're not going to come back. Yeah. And and maybe for you, it's like you have to find your own closure in a sense. I feel like hearing you say that there's a lot of hurt behind those words. I don't know. You just seem very triggered by those experiences. What do you mean by that? I think in a lot of different conversations I've had with you over the past three years. My answers change a lot because I've gotten... No, I wasn't going to say that. Oh, well, my answers do change a lot. Yeah, I feel like over the last three years, like, you have said that multiple times. Like, and you say it as if, like, sometimes I think, like, well, damn, how many girls did, did he, like, bring into your life and bring out? Because... The way the way you talk about it seems like it's happened like multiple times, a lot, a lot. And 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 taking me out of the equation, it's only happened three times. So it's obvious that those three times that it happened were very impactful on you. I don't know. I don't it sometimes to me, it does seem like there's been more, but there hasn't. I think it's just been like. 
I don't know. Do you think a part of you still carries that, those feelings, um, those negative feelings behind those experiences because you didn't allow yourself to really like, like go through those emotions that you felt when it was happening? Yeah. Cause I felt like I really didn't need to have any of those emotions, but you did. Those, those emotions are very like, I, I did, but I was just like, it's fine. But it's not Adriana. It's not fine. Do you understand that you just like brushed your feelings under a rug, but Mm -hmm. they're still inside of you? And that's why your eyes are getting watery right now? No. (laughs) Your eyes are not getting watery? No, I don't feel them. (laughs) I swear I don't feel my eyes getting watery. She's getting very emotional. Yeah, I'm getting emotional because I could feel her. I could feel her like, do you feel like you carry those feelings with you till today? Um... Sometimes I'll like think about it. Like when I'm with you, then I'll think about it. I'll be like, I almost felt this connected with someone else, but they're not, they're not around. Mm -hmm. Do you have, like, do you feel that fear almost like where you're like, I wonder when this person's going to leave my life. Yeah. Or if it's possible. Does how does that make you feel? Hurt. Yeah. You do have hurt. And it's okay. I think that, I think that, uh, I get emotional. (laughs) I think I need a minute. (laughs) Um, sorry. I think I bring that up because I, I know that you carry that, that pain with you. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of it is because you, you didn't have closure in those, in a lot of those situations, the most recent one, especially. And I think it's a, it's especially important for you to have that closure, whether it's closure with, you know, talking it over with your dad or, you know, not just having somebody so like just ripped out of your life, you know, without saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I think at your age, you were nine years old. That's why I wanted to meet you for myself instead of someone introducing you to me. Cause I was like, if this person's not here to stay, I at least want to actually like meet them. Yeah. Even your terms. Even if I did meet him, if my dad introduced them, if he introduced you to me, I would still be like, but I didn't really know them, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I had a connection, but I didn't know, no. no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you are afraid to get close to people sometimes? Mm -hmm. And do you feel like it's it's connected to those experiences that your dad like would introduce you to people you'd get close to them and then you they would just all leave. of a sudden not see them anymore yeah yeah um I think it's I have those feelings because I guess it's harder for me to understand that not to understand it but to ex not express to just have those feelings in mm-hmm. general because one, I was used to this person where girls would just come and go, which it sounds like there's a lot of girls, but there was never. It's only four, but it. I guess I was like through different ages, so it felt like more people. Mm-hmm. But you were also young, and you didn't know a life of somebody having more than one partner. Like you watched your mom with one person since your dad. Yeah, so I think that it was different. It mm-hmm. was harder to. Have. Like you, you couldn't comprehend somebody being with one person for this amount of time Be- and then moving on to another person for this amount of time. Because I never, I never met someone that has had that happen. So I was like, I'm just like the only one. Which I get it. That's why for you, that's a lot. Like three people or four people for us isn't a lot. And it's not a lot for a lot of people now, for the, a lot of adult people now. mm who have experienced life, but for you, who, who's just starting your life, that's like, that's a lot that three, four people are a lot. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. How could we work through this? I don't know. That was the past. There's nothing (laughs) you could really do. True. But I wouldn't want you to grow up into life, having, carrying that kind of like trigger with you where you're going to feel like you have to guard yourself on getting close to people because you're afraid they're going to walk out of your life because that is a real thing. A lot of people grow up from like small experiences that they have as young child, as a young child, and they carry that 
into their life as an adult and it can just get bigger if you don't work through that i think i've thought about that about you before even oh my gosh stop <laughs> oh gosh there's no need to cry um, i'm not crying <laughs> <laughs> um i've even the, even now that you're married to my dad i still felt that while you guys were just getting married Mm-hmm. At the wedding, I thought about that. Um, uh, I actually was crying also because at your wedding, because I was like, is this person going to leave? Yeah, and you're probably like, it's a matter of time before this person leaves. Yeah, even if you guys are getting married, I was like, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, you could just leave any moment, and I wouldn't have to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. And your feelings are valid, and I think that... This is this is the beginning of a big conversation that we have to continue to have with you in our house because it it is carrying into these years. And I think the first time you brought it up, like even three years ago, the little comments you make, like I honestly was thinking, well, maybe, you know, it's still fresh for you. It's going to kind of diminish over time. And the fact that it's not and you're still carrying that with you lets us know that there's a bigger issue inside of you that has that you're not able to let go of and we have to help you work through that personally um you can have talks with me about it but I don't think I'll ever be able to let it go what do you feel like you're not able to let go good one Shannon (laughs) also saying Shannon is so fun I don't know why but um I think (sighs) dang it now I don't know what I was gonna say I said, what do you think you're not able to let go of? Um, probably saying goodbye. Which, it's they're gone. I'm not going to see them again and say goodbye and then not see them forever. That's not how life works. But um, I think with the people that I did have close connections with, I never got to say goodbye. I had a talk, and then I never said goodbye. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. So. And how does that make you feel? Okay. I'm mm-hmm. like... I still think I don't think about it like on a daily basis. I'll sometimes I'll just be in like like deep thinking, and it'll just come up out of nowhere. Then I'll think about it, but then I'm like, there's nothing I could do about it. Mm-hmm. So it's fine. Like when you guys when you said that we'll have talks with you about it, I feel like there is a point to have talks about it, but at the same time, I feel like there isn't a point because there's nothing that you guys could ever do to fix that Mm -hmm. because it's not like you're gonna bring the person back so i could apologize so i could say goodbye do you think that would help you and then to bring them back to so you could have closure with them no what do you think would would have helped you nothing i think if i would have just said goodbye in that moment Mm -hmm. when it was happening do you think did 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 you feel that your remix (laughs) (laughs) do you feel like your dad did a good job explaining why the relationship didn't work out and giving you the closure that he could have gave you, you know, on his own. Yeah. But I feel like there wasn't that much explaining because it's not like you're going to tell me what happened in a fight, Mm -hmm. which is the reason, you know, maybe they broke up or something. It's not like you're going to explain that to me. So I think my dad tried the best for me to understand when I was younger. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do you think you would appreciate more conversations to further understand now that you're getting older? No. No? Do you understand um, when relationships don't work out? Like, what do you mean? Like, for me, it took me a long time to, like, I couldn't understand for for the longest time how two people can at one point love each other and then not know anything about each other. Like, and just leave each other i like for the longest time like i could not grasp how you can love somebody spend almost every day with them and then they're a complete stranger to you to me to just anybody i just couldn't understand that i couldn't understand i thought it was normal you thought that was normal Mm -hmm. even while like your mom has done an amazing job showing you the opposite example you thought it was normal on your dad's side yeah I thought it was normal because I was used to it. With your dad? Yeah. Babe, you're over there getting very emotional. Do you want to express yourself? I didn't know a lot of that, um, those feelings, 
that you had, Adriana. I, I I think I felt maybe some of them in the past, but I didn't know into detail or into depth that they were. It frustrates me that I'm I'm frustrated for two reasons. One, um, I don't know how I could have let that happen because I um, I was you. And I'm always talking about how I parent um, based on how not to parent. And I failed. (laughs) I never want to cause you pain. And I did, and and I, um, I'm frustrated also because, <clears throat> again, I knew what not to do. I I had a very multiple examples of of how not to do something like that. Um, people came in and out of my life as well, <clears throat> a lot more than three. And I never got to say goodbye either. Um, and I, <clears throat> I've had my, um, reasoning, I think behind my abandonment issues, mainly from my mom. Um, that as I'm sitting here listening to you, I think I realize that there's, there's a couple more pieces to the puzzle that I didn't realize. Um, and part of it is not having closure with some of the people, mainly one, um, that I loved. So, um, and lastly, my other frustration is, and I will tell you this as well, I realized that it's not my fault that I was dealt these experiences you need to know. <laughs> that it's not your fault either. It's my fault that I didn't allow that closure to happen. Um, it's my fault I didn't allow you to have a say-so. One of them, I, I didn't think you were old enough, but that's still wrong. It was assuming, and I shouldn't have assumed. And... um It's um, moments like this that I realize I am not perfect. (laughs) Um, That I will make mistakes. I do everything in my power, which I believe is a very high power, to not make mistakes. I understand. I preach all the time. It's a part of the journey and the process. But it damn sure doesn't make it easier Mm -hmm. um, to see you in pain kills me number one number two knowing i had something to do with that like it's really hard for me to accept um and i apologize for letting it uh get to this point for this long um i wish i would have known sooner i think the other thing that really pains me right now is I know um, you're protecting your heart Um, and I know maybe because you're still too young but 
I think I realize now more than ever, I know what that closure would do for you. And you don't even realize. So when Shay's asking you, would it help if you were able to say goodbye or say whatever you want to say or listen to whatever you want to hear, it 1000% would help you. Um, I don't know if that's possible, which is also frustrating because I will do anything to help you. And lastly, I, uh, I just, I told you on the last episode, my biggest fear is, um, failing you. And I know I'm not going to be perfect. Um, but I, I, this is tough for me to swallow this pill because I could have and should have prevented this from happening and I didn't. Well, I don't like, I'll show that I could cry, but I don't like to show, I guess you could say emotions. Yeah. So that's why I'll make jokes. Mm -hmm. Um, But thank you for, it's not your fault either though. It's also my fault that you never knew about that, those feelings. Yeah, but I, I could have done a better job of um, creating a certain space for you to feel comfortable in coming to me and sharing how you felt. And especially because, again, I was you almost to a T. And I still sit with some of that pain and hurt and sadness. And again, I'm, j- I don't, I'm very surprised and shocked at myself that I, A, let it happen, B, let it happen multiple times, and then C, let it go this long without talking about it in this length and detail. I think if I could add anything to that, I think that probably the first two wasn't as necessary as the last one. And I can see why you didn't do it on the last one. And I think it's it's part of it, like... It's part of the reason, it's part of the relationship that you had with your ex being Mm -hmm. kind of toxic. And I think that's part of the reason why you didn't give Adriana that, that closure. But I think that your relationship with your ex was entirely different from her relationship with your ex. And I think that if you would have just allowed yourself to separate the two and maybe you didn't have to be there, maybe your mom could have brought you or grandma donuts or somebody, you know, just so you could have had that closure with the last one, I think would have really helped. I think the two before that wasn't as like necessary. Yeah. I mean, one of those two, I guess the first one, I think maybe still would have been because of the length of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Granted, Adriana, you were two to six, but still able obviously to develop feelings. Because I basically grew up with them. Yeah. In a sense. Um, and there was a lot of very important years and, and there were a lot of them. The second one, um, I definitely didn't even think about a conversation because it was so short lived. Like I said, I think you guys maybe only saw it was less than 10 times. I know that, uh, the last one, my fear, I was fearful that she wasn't in the right frame of mind to have even a conversation of possible closure or you know, anything along those lines, because I feared that she would put me in this negative light, you know, it's your dad's fault, or, you know, I don't know, I just, um, I didn't trust her, is the thing, and I definitely didn't trust her with my daughter, so um, I then went into protective mode, whether that's right or wrong, it was an instinct to protect you, and therefore I, um, you know, removed her from, again, even a possibility. And I don't, I still don't know if that was right or wrong. Um, But nonetheless, you know, Shay was talking about earlier too, how there are people who still carry that into their later years in life, into their adulthood. And I am that person. I carry a lot of, you know, fear of people leaving me, fear of abandonment, whether it's a friend, it's a, uh, a partner, you know, like, I, I don't know how long they're going to stay. I don't know when they're going to go, how they're going to go, if I get to say goodbye. 
and I'm 34 years old and I've done God knows how much work and I still feel this way. So to hear that, I guess the early signs for you to possibly have this fear as well. And then knowing I had something to do with that, like I, I have to like really um, process this and it's not even the word. I don't have words, but it's tough. It's really tough. Or even to have the immediate defense mechanism of it's okay. I'm used to it. I'm used to just that's saying goodbye another thing to too, people. That's, I'm, I can't accept that. Um, I, I have to do everything I can to help you navigate, navigate your feelings through this particular for sure department better because that's that's not okay and as Shay you know I know it's uncomfortable that she's digging but it's healing um, and that's another thing for me you know I've realized the more you dig the more you will get to the root of it which eventually is the ultimate healing you know of, of the whole process so um, you know I've always said to you, you can't suppress your feelings you can't brush them off and you know this is I think one thing that you've really been harboring and, and festering with and you know maybe not even knowing how to deal with it, but then just still saying like, but either way, it's fine. But as Shay kept saying, it's not fine. And, um, you know, again, I, I trying to figure out a way to come up with a solution. Not that that's the right thing to do. I just, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. <sighs> but I do appreciate both of you for, um, having this dialogue. Um, again, I always try to fix problems and solutions, and that's a thing I'm trying to work on. But in a way, I'm, I'm appreciative of this conversation because this you have to be aware in order to fix something. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of the problem. And, and I, I was somewhat aware, but not again to this length, so in this amount of detail. So I, I'm happy that we're talking about this. It's, again... We're going to be better for it, for sure. It's not going to be worse. And it just so happened to be that thousands of people were a fly <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a lot of people who can relate to that. And my hope is if, if anyone is about to do something that I did, or if there's someone out there who still feels the way that you do or like I do, that this is somewhat healing and helpful for them. I mean, here's the thing, too, is there's no right way to raise a child. And, and in moments that you think you're doing, you're making the best decision at that time, I think for one parent and child, that could be the best decision. For another, it could be not the best decision. So I think that we're all built differently. We all process things differently. We all go through emotions differently. I think what the lesson is here is just to really be able, um, as a parent, to be, be able to really navigate into your child's thoughts and really allow them to have a voice that they can express themselves and and maybe their feelings aren't even you know the same feelings that every child would have but they're your feelings you know and I think they're valid and how you're feeling and what you're carrying carrying through the years of that happening is is very real and it's and it's something that you have to uh, like be able to talk about you know and release it in the best ways that you can. Um, you guys have great explanations to it, and like you said, I wish I could fix that. Um, but I almost feel like it it can't be a fix because it it happened, but I know it's not gonna happen again. Right. So there's kind of no like solution. Yeah. I actually told your dad this one time. I said, sometimes a solution isn't an actionable thing. It's not something that, um, that like, we can't go back and change the past or anything. Instead, what the solution could be is just giving you more understanding as to why that happened. Give you more, more um, peace into why your dad made that decision, you know? But what decision? Like, for me not to say goodbye, is that... Yeah, not to say goodbye, not me um, allowing there to be a space for you to talk to these women. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, if, and I'm sure people are like, but you were so young, you know, making these decisions for Adriana. But I can't even use that as an excuse because it was the same decision that I made each and every time, whether I was at first 24 and then, you know, 27 and then 29. 30. 
you know, 29, 30, it was like, it, it was the same result. Um, I think though, I just, I know it was a protective mechanism, but it's just, again, not to say it was the right thing to do. Well, I think at the end of the day, as we started all of this by the ring at the oh, ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go back to that? Um, oh my gosh, you guys, that wasn't even, we didn't even answer the question. So, <laughs> so here we go. I hope that, you know, and maybe before we started recording today, we talked about this, the ring and, you know, Adriana said she didn't really remember how she felt, et cetera. And I think for me now, as I'm sure it does for you, mama, that ring is even more of a significant moment because as you said, you were sitting there watching our wedding thinking still, even at our wedding, I wonder if Shay will still be here in X amount of time. And then she surprises us all and essentially gives you a ring. And again, honey, you can explain this more, but she gives you a ring to solidify that a, she's not going anywhere and B you are as important to her as I am. Mm -hmm. And so that is like, hopefully it more so felt like, like she's letting me in not to make her sound, um, make her, um, I guess you, not sound, but um, make her, like, make me think that she was just going to take you away. And more so, it was, right. just, it was like, you're, you, like, we're all in a family now. Right. Well, honey, maybe, again, you can give more detail about that um, moment, experience, and why it even came about. We need to s do better at sticking on top. <laughs> I think a big part of me um, including you in our ceremony by getting you a ring and giving you my own set of vows was, again, it goes back to I wanted you to feel just as important to me as your dad was. I wanted you to know that I recognize that you are an extension of your dad and me marrying him is, is you are 1000% included in that. And that's why I'm like also even really big on like, you having a room here and and even when we have future kids like I'm really big on you having a room and they having a room like they're not going to have a room if you don't have a room you know because mm -hmm. you are very much a part of our family as as our future kids are going to be you know and I never want you to feel that you are it's it's our family and then you you know I want you to just be in that dynamic with us so giving you the ring and giving you the vows was me solidifying that me acknowledging you in my union with your father in Ugh, father <laughs> in including you in that and um i just wanted you to feel just as a, as special. special just as special especial, especial. <laughs> started talking in spanish <laughs> <laughs> i wanted you to feel just as important and special on that day because you were Thank you. Last and final question, and I guess this could be for both of you. What's one thing that you two maybe aren't aware of that you appreciate about each other? Oh no, she thinks I'm. I think she knows that I'm appreciated of you, like the way you listen. But what's <laughs> one thing that maybe she doesn't know? I don't know. Is there anything you've never said to her, but you felt or? Um. No. I feel like Adriana and I have a lot of deep conversations on a regular. <laughs> sometimes out of nowhere. <laughs> like, sometimes we'll be in the car and, like, we'll either bring up something and be like, speaking of that, I was like, how does that, okay. Um, let me see if I know of anything that perhaps you don't know. Of She's pregnant. Appreciate. I actually did think that you were pregnant. Yeah. Because of those gummies. What gummies? When you bought them. I searched up what that meant. And it was like, for your baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that why you were eating them? Ew, no. You, <laughs> you made me eat one. <laughs> what about that other stuff I made you drink? Yeah, she made me <laughs> drink this thing. Remember when we were like, we were like, oh, we're starting on a YouTube channel? We never continued it. 
um, Shay was like, this will make you have your period. And I was like, ugh, I don't want No, that. you wanted to drink it now. I did and I didn't. I was pressured. <laughs> and Shay was like, here. And then she started, and then after I did it, I was like, ugh. I almost, like, ugh. She was like, actually, your dad. It was like the oil that you got me. That the- helps with, like, cramps and stuff. And then she was like, um, actually, your dad used this to grow hair. And I was like, <laughs> I lied. I was like, first of all, one that doesn't make sense. Two, what did you just feed me? Like, what are you? I said it helps. It helps your dad grow hair on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, one thing I see. We get off topic. <laughs> Adriana, that perhaps you don't know, would be. I think I appreciate. Um, how loving and affectionate you are towards me. I didn't know that. <laughs> Did I already tell you that? Yeah. Oh, so we talk a lot. I feel like you're you're truly my first experience at being a step parent, a, a step parent or a parent. You know, of having like a child in our household, and you're giving me not to say that you're practice for me, but you're giving me that experience before I have kids mm-hmm. and you can say that's practice basically I practice guess, I mean it just sounds so like you're my practice child <laughs> like you're not my practice child but um I feel like with you around too I'm more conscious and aware at how I'm communicating how I'm delivering messages because I think that I want to make sure that yeah and you're receiving me in the best light that I'm trying to intentionally deliver my messages in, if that makes sense. I guess I can answer that as well. Um, Things that you both have taught me and things that maybe you don't know how I feel. I have learned um, through Shay as a father to be more sensitive to your feelings, to be more patient and understanding and You know, again, not having to feel the need to come up with a solution. Sometimes just sitting there and listening is is more than enough. You know, I've actually seen that in a lot of comments from people like, you know, the best thing you can do for your daughter is to continue just to show up for her. You know, just continue to keep that consistency and just be more open to, you know, maybe how she needs you. And one day maybe you can tell me how you need me, you know, sometimes. So Shay has really helped me with that for sure. And also... I've, as you both know, I've, I've been very, everyone knows, I've been very vocal about my fear of once we have kids, you not feeling that you're a part of this family. Um, and Shay has taught me that, you know, there's ways to help with that, you know, like from your room. Now it's your room slash office. And Shay was like, you're still not paying me rent. Chicago pays me rent for my bathroom. (laughs) Um, you know, Shay was like, I don't know, because it's taking away from Adriana's room. And in my head, I'm like, she's only here for maybe six weeks out of the year. Like the other 46, we we need the space, you know, but I I understood the feeling that you may have, which is like, you know, oh, I can't even have a a room here. I have to have a room plus an office or I have to have a bathroom slash Chicago's bathroom, you know? So I, I didn't really think of those things. And when I thought back to the apartment in Chicago, you had your own room and you had your own bathroom. You know, no one really shared that, especially your room. Um, so although you were younger back in Chicago with our apartment and although, you know, I saw you um, not more consistent, it was more consistently, but same amount of time, you know, you really probably felt like this was your home too, you know, in Chicago, maybe unlike here. Obviously, there's more space in Chicago, and we'll have more space here soon. But nonetheless, that's, you know, a huge thing Shay's, Shay's taught me is to try to put myself in your shoes more. And uh, it's helpful. I think what you've taught me, Mama, maybe that you you don't know is um, you've you've always been someone to, and you don't even have to try to do this, whether it's a testament of how much I love and care about you, but you've always um, kept me on my toes. 
So a little bit more like you explain you're in the, in the, in a good way. You're a difficult person to please. That is and true. I appreciate that. I, um, I, I have to watch that. It doesn't get to the point where you're never satisfied. Cause that's gotten me into a lot of trouble and gets a lot of people in trouble, but um, you just don't settle. You know, you don't just settle for things that you don't accept or that aren't aligned with what you want to do or what you want to have. And I appreciate that because you're not afraid to speak on that. You're not afraid to say, mm, no. <laughs> and that's that's great. So what I mean by you keeping on, me on my toes is. It's like last night when I was, when you were explaining something, something to me, I was like, no. Yeah. So for me, as much as there's times where I'm like, oh, cool, okay, I can just take a breather and I can relax. Like, I'm, I got the dad thing down lock, you know, unlock. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, you, you remind me in, in ways where I realize that I, I don't and I need to be doing more or I need to switch things up or I need to improve on this. And you don't even realize it. Mm. So it really helps me. You're like my accountability partner with you even knowing. And you ultimately, for 1,000% sure, really in a sense were my practice into being a father you know obviously you're my first as everyone knows you know when you have your first child you're like I don't know how to do this never done this before never been here before but um it's really helped me trial and error I want to I want to add something to the ending of this um last summer I felt like it was our mission or my mission to really allow you to have a voice and feel comfortable using it, especially when it came to with your dad, because there would be a lot of conversations we would have and you would say things behind um, the scene to me. And I'm like, you should tell your dad. And I never felt like you had that level of comfortability. And I, I think we had many, many talks, the three of us, where we kind of allowed you that that stage, I guess, to really, you know, express yourself and have a voice. And I say I'm proud of you because this summer I feel like I've watched you use your voice a lot more than you ever have. And I'm watching you grow into somebody that I just can't help but be very, very proud of. Thank you. Um, when you, s you said that I use my voice more this summer, <laughs> this sounds so annoying but my mom's always like Ijana, you talk a lot and i'm like that's because i'm trying to express my feelings she's like i know but you s like some things that you say like it's almost like you know everything like you know how to explain something and i'm not an adult everyone's like you're very mature for your age but i don't think i am and i think too mama like you're at a, at a point in your life where you're trying to figure out how to express your feelings. You're trying to figure out how to gather your feelings into words, how to articulate them. So for you, it could be, you just need a soundboard. You, you're going to be the one getting them out and they will make sense to you. Other people need help from others to understand how they feel. So I think for you, you're, you're in that phase of like, what is it that works for me? Yeah, I think that you really do also a good job in moments of, um, of I guess, like if your dad's feeling a certain way or if I'm feeling a certain way off of something you did, you do a good job at listening to what we're saying. And then you're saying, I didn't mean to make you feel like that. And I'm sorry. And then you'll explain something. And I think that's very, very rare in somebody your age. And it's, it's very admirable. So I would just add to what your mom said. You are very mature. And I think the more that you can be able to express yourself at this age is, is great. I think you're going to continue to grow into like a beautiful, beautiful person. And yeah, I'm proud of you. Thank you. I don't know what to say to that. Like, thank you. I feel like sounds like, I don't know. It's a lot. It's lots of process. You know, yeah. I mean, Thank you is, is good enough. You know, it's, I think you're, you're, again, you're really trying to, um, you're figuring out who you are and who you're going to be, what works for you, what doesn't. And it's important for all the people in your life who love and care about you to just show up in any kind of way you need us. And as we try to figure that out as well, 
you know, as I said, Shay taught me how to be more sensitive, that I need to be more sensitive with you. I didn't know that. And that could really help me showing up for you, which could ultimately help you open up more. So you're just figuring out, which is great. And the, the best thing about all of this is that we're having these type of conversations that I never had yeah. at any point in time as a kid. <laughs> and also, like, the, the biggest thing, you know, part of the reason why I started Who Can Relate is I, I felt alone. And I don't want people to feel alone. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want people, no offense to anyone listening or watching that I don't know, I damn sure don't want you, my daughter, to ever feel alone. Yeah. So that's why these conversations are going to help all of us. Yeah. I kept a lot in growing up. And and it's a bad habit that I have as an adult now. So that's why when I see a mood shift in you or an energy shift, I really try hard to like allow you to be able to express yourself when that happens. And let and and feel comfortable letting us know why that happened or how you're feeling, you know. Well, <clears throat> wait. I just I haven't used a soundboard all day. <laughs> to conclude. Yeah, to to wrap this amazing episode up. The one thing I was going to add to um, maybe a way that I feel about both of you that you don't know. Um, I <clears throat> am very. Um, good at expressing how I feel in writing and journaling. Uh, I have a hard time doing it to the person, to their face, especially. So while we're all here, <laughs> um, these last couple weeks that you've been in LA, just like last year and the year prior to that, but for some reason this, this year more, I think because you're getting older and I know that any parent in your life, step or real, <laughs> uh, our days are numbered as far as us having you whenever we want, you know, before you start to drive, before you start to go out with your friends. And I get to start learning how to drive. You didn't know this. I can start learning how to drive next year. Oh, and dad told you? I know, but my dad's going to let me drive. Your car. <laughs> Either Tesla is fine because it's self drivable yeah so, so there's kind of no point it's okay but uh you know i know that you're getting older and we won't always have this quality time you know and you may not always want to have as much quality the quantity time and quality time mm -hmm. so for me i think knowing that that is coming to an end i've been um really trying to stay more in the moment with it and just really appreciating it and you know, there's a, a huge part of me that wants to have more kids. Huge part of me. And now that I think about it, I feel like it's going to be weird watching you guys have kids. Um, we going to have another mini Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Shannon. <laughs> I hope I don't have a Libra mini you, Shannon. Not an indecisive takes an hour at in and out to order many of you know but um back to what i was saying i uh i'm also fearful to have more kids because i don't want to fail them especially a son because you know a father to a son i'm like i'm have this major responsibility of because they're gonna be a father one day well i'm showing him how to be a man you know i lean on your mom a lot and shay a lot to show you how to be a woman i, I can't i can only do so much um not really my department. <laughs> so, um, but I am fearful. But this trip in particular of having you out here really alleviated a lot of that fear. Um, I get really excited to come home every day. But while you're in town, I get even more excited because it's a family dynamic. And my whole life I've wanted a family dynamic. So having you here whether we play Monopoly at night together, whether we watch movies together, whether we talk, whether we cook dinner, whether we're just in each other's presence um, helps alleviate a lot of those fears. And uh, it, you, you both give me what I've always craved as a child, which again is a, is a family at home. So I'm super grateful for that and really happy. <clears throat> and maybe you two didn't know that. <laughs> yeah oh i forgot you don't have headphones yeah so on that note before i pass the mic so you both can have one 
thanks for staying with us. Thanks for allowing us to really be able to get a lot of this off our chest, off our mind, off our heart. Listening. It's very healing for us. Hope it's healing for everyone else. I forgot that there's a camera right I here. Know, I know. I was just going to say. <laughs> I was just going to say you're not looking at the camera. Sorry. Let's make eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd be like, Justin never looks at the camera. So I know it was extremely emotional for all of us. And was it's not expecting that. But we how all could were I not, not? <laughs> expecting that? But actually, I kind of was expecting that. I wasn't expecting me to cry because, you know, I'm a. You were expecting me to cry. Actually, yes. Yeah. I was like, it's going to shake a cry for me. She always cries. Yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah. But it was it was necessary. It's one of those things I feel like you don't know you need it until you receive it. And I didn't know I needed to receive all that. I'm sure for you guys as well. So just grateful that we were all able to have this dialogue. Look into the camera. I am looking forward to the memories of right now, which is what we're creating. And just, again, really happy that you're here, Mama. It does, it does make me sad to think that, like, even, like, the difference from last summer to this summer, you are so much older. Like, as far as, like, even, like, I mean, last summer you were like, let's go in the pool, let's go in the pool, like, every day, like, you wanted, like, there was, you weren't on your phone at all, like, last summer, now it's <laughs> like, you are a true teenager glued to your phone but i still do want to go to the pool yeah no i know oh, i know okay. but like you're a true teenager in in if the you regard won't play if you won't play mermaid with me in the pool we're not we're not friends yeah in the regard of like you are glued to your phone wanting to talk to your friends 24 7 like i forget what that's like but that was me at one point so i understand it but it's like it makes me so sad because you're slowly drifting more into your own like person space where we're not really cool to hang out with anymore, you know, <laughs> as much like you would just much rather be locked in your room all day and talking to Natalie, <laughs> playing Fortnite. <laughs> and Vicky. Can't forget about and Vicky. Vicky. So, Vicky's um, there too. I feel like this. <laughs> so I feel like this summer is like, a, like we're getting half of you from last summer and the half of the new you and I feel like next summer is gonna be literally like all teenager like I might be growing yeah you might not even want to go to the pool at all you're like I'm too cool for you I'm going to hang out with Zara I'm gonna pick her up in my car and goodbye no I know not next year but I'm exaggerating she's already overthinking <laughs> I'm exaggerating <laughs> actually yeah if you guys move into that house near there, I'll just drive our go-kart to their house. Seriously. I feel like next summer it's going to be even less time that we're going to get with you because you're just going to want to be in your own space. Don't worry, guys. I'll still want to play mermaid in the pool. Okay. <laughs> Good. And you'll still want slumber parties with me? Yeah. You're like, maybe not that, but... No, yeah. I'm like, if you're on your... Pe I feel like <laughs> your ladies' days... Wait, what's you might be on your ladies' days then. Oh, my God, don't. Ant flow. <laughs> And oh, the episode? We'll let you end the episode. <laughs> That's like the third time I had to use. I thought we were going to end this a long time ago. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. I'm finally looking in the camera, even though I did sometimes. We'll all get closer. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. <laughs> Wait, can you see me? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to us, being here in spirit with us. I actually won't be on another episode for actually a while, so I might want to have to keep rewatching this to remember me. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bye. She's gonna be also, a, she's gonna be a whole teenager next episode. Subscribe. Next year. I might not even pay attention. I'll be on my phone the whole entire episode. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs>